And VJ, it's your job to yeah. tell us in two minutes uh, <laughs> or less uh, <laughs> how simultaneity breaks down in special relativity, how you, observers in relative motion have different senses of time. Right. So, so you know, special relativity is this really somewhat phantasmagorical system where uh, the perceptions of the world of, of stationary observers and moving observers can be very different. In particular, moving clocks are supposed to run slow compared to stationary clocks. Now, that sounds very mysterious. And what we're going to do today is we're going to show you exactly how that works so that you can reason it out for yourself. Right? So special relativity basically was a system invented by Einstein uh, to account for the fact that experiments show that the speed of light was constant to all observers. So we're going to start from that and conclude that moving clocks must run slower. So let me, we're also used to this statement by now, that moving, you know, the speed of light is constant, but we don't think about how strange that actually is. Okay? So imagine a bicycle that's moving this way at, I don't know, five miles an hour, right? It's moving at five miles an hour. Now suppose you jog next to the bicycle, because you're the bicyclist's friend, and you're jogging at five miles an hour. Then pretty clearly, if you're the jogger, this is my finger, then clearly relative to you, the bicycle isn't moving at all. So it seems very clear that from our everyday experience that the speed of things depends upon your own state of motion. But for light, that's not the case. No matter what your state of motion is, the speed of light is constant, it always moves at the speed of light, according to you, your perception. And from that, you can actually conclude that moving clocks must run slower. And we're going to just show that to you completely explicitly. Here, we have a special kind of clock. It's called a light clock. We're going to use light to measure off seconds. So you see the light ball going up and down, down and up, down and up. And every time it goes down and up, tick, tock, tick, tock, it ticks off a second. So it's a very special kind of clock where we use light to visualize the workings of the, you know, the hands, uh, the, the arrows on your, on your wristwatch. And in this way, we're going to track you know, how time passes using the motion of the ball of light down and up, down and up. Now, that was one clock. So what we want to do is we want to take two clocks, both light clocks, one stationary and one moving, and compare them. So here's uh, two light clocks. So there was this question of, do you have a bad clock or a good clock, right? So for our purposes, we don't really care if it's a bad clock or a good clock. We want them to be the same clock, these two clocks as you can see, are completely synchronized, right? They start at the same time, the light ball goes down and up, down and up, and every time both of them go down and up, you take off a second, and both clocks are clearly going at exactly the same speed, they measure time in exactly the same way, and this is our notion of having the same time, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take both of these clocks to one side and set one moving, and then we'll see what happens, all right? Here we go, notice, the balls go down and up, down and up, but you can see that in the moving clock, you can see by the dotted red line that the ball of light has a longer distance to go, to go down and up, just because the clock is moving. Now we said that the speed of light is constant for everybody, right? For the stationary clock and the moving clock, you should see that the ball of light is still moving at the speed of light, but it has longer to go. So it must be that it reads, the time gets the tick tock, ticks off slower. Indeed, you see that. In that clock, if you look at it, the moving clock registers a less time than the stationary one. So we can play it again, just to emphasize that. And you can see, as you see, the clock begins to move down, up, down, up. Both balls are moving at the speed of light, but because the dotted trajectory is longer, down, up takes less time for the stationary clock than the moving clock, so the moving clock runs slower. So that's for the specific clock, but it's actually true for your wristwatch too. Moving clocks run slower. So now none of you have any excuse for not having a complete clear intuition of, of the you should core be of a, Einstein's theory. That's, that's be, what it comes down to. Right. Yeah, you should no. be able to explain this to your grandmother. Yeah.